I love it when I hear about a billionaire who is doing a great thing for the world. Many of them just spend their days just sunbaking on their super yachts or fox hunting. But there are a handful of billionaires that are trying to do great things for the world. Whether it be trying to vaccinate the developing world or even something that's not quite as selfless but still pretty cool is as far as trying to get us into space there are some incredible projects but there's one billionaire out there that has actually made it his mission to end slavery and i have to say that i had a bit of a proud moment when i found out that this guy is actually a fellow australian his name is andrew forrest but we all call him twiggy because you know in australia we're all mates and everyone knows everyone but don't listen to him though if he states that he's never heard of me or that he's never met me. I mean, I'm a YouTuber with under 1,000 subscribers. I mean, how could he not know who I am? Anyway, to tell his story, first I'll briefly skim over about how he got rich, and then I'll go into the details about this, this movement to end global slavery. So, he primarily got rich through mining metals in Western Australia. That is in the western part of Australia. Now born in 1961 on Perth, he is currently the second richest in Australia at $27.25 billion net worth. Now he is the owner of Fortescue Metals and he has provided a large portion of the materials that China has used to basically build all of the new cities out of. And just like all of the mega, mega, mega rich in the world, he's had his fair share of board firings, comebacks and legal disputes of the government. And I could go into more details about these stories, but it isn't a story that you've heard a million times before with the rise of other billionaires in the world. And he's also the owner of the shoe brand RM Williams, as well as a few food processing companies as well. Oh, and he's also an investor in green technology. He's partnered with Bill Gates in their Breakthrough Energy venture, where they finance green technology startups. And Andrew himself is a particularly big financer of hydrogen technologies. But by now, I'll move on to why this guy is an absolute legend. So in 2010, Andrew's daughter, whose name is Grace, and she was 15 at the time, was volunteering in an orphanage in Nepal. And all of the children that she was looking after were later trafficked overseas. And she had a bit of a near miss herself. And naturally, Twee was furious on behalf of his daughter, and also furious on behalf of the children that his daughter was looking after. I mean, who wouldn't be? And he wanted to do something about it. But upon an initial investigation, he found out that if he were to try and fight this massive slavery network, that he'd be up against the most dangerous crime gangs and the most dangerous mafias in the world. So he was initially a little bit hesitant, but his daughter Grace made it very clear to him in no uncertain terms that this will be her life mission to fight slavery and that she would do it with or without his help. And traditionally, other people who have tried to take on slavery have become very frustrated and it is a very demoralizing cause. Because historically speaking, for every person that you manage to free from slavery, another three seem to be taken into it. So one step forward, three steps back. But Grace started thinking like her father in the business world and then thought about tackling this from a bigger level to think on a bigger scale. And after some discussion and some time to think it over, Andrew decided to help his daughter by throwing everything that he had at this issue. And so naturally to solve a problem, the first thing you need to do is actually investigate it or to try and figure out what is actually going on. And so whilst his investigation started with child trafficking, he then stumbled across the wider slavery industry, which includes child marriages, human trafficking, traditional slavery, and also a very modern form of slavery, which is debt bondage. And from his research, he found that there is approximately about 45 million people in slavery in the world right now. And that number is going up a little bit every year. And although that seems to be a little bit demoralizing, the reason that this number is growing isn't so much because new people are being taken into slavery, but because more existing slaves are being discovered. And the next thing that he discovered that although slavery has been criminalized in basically every country on earth, the only thing that this anti-slavery legislation achieved was to send the industry into the shadows. And whilst Andrew Forrester was doing this investigative work, he learnt about this common scheme that goes on where South Indians are tricked into going into certain other countries into this system basically known as debt bondage where the employer from overseas will say oh we'll pay for your plane ticket or we'll pay for you to get a passport and fly over and then we'll pay you a wage and then you can pay back the passport, pay back that plane ticket and then you can fly back to your families whenever you want and earn a decent wage. But the problem is though is that the wage is a tiny fraction of what it should be and it is unrealistic to ever to be able to afford that plane ticket so therefore they're trapped overseas without a passport and with no hope of being able to buy a plane ticket and from when someone gets tricked into this their life expectancy is roughly about five years and it is a horrible life for them and so when he is following this rabbit hole of investigating this process he found that the company that was doing this was actually a massive supplier for a british company and this british company was actually a supplier for his metals business and so he had slavery in his own supply chain and he wasn't even aware of it and this blew him away i mean 
slavery is supposed to be illegal everywhere, especially in Britain and especially in Australia, and yet it still is in both his and this business associate's supply line. So Twiggy needed to think of a new way to tackle this problem. And being the successful businessman that he is, he knew exactly how to tackle the industry, not through legislation, but through its revenues. He actually wants to work with organizations that use slavery so then he can assist them in transitioning out of using slavery because as the old saying goes, you achieve more by working with people rather than against them. And so with this strategy in mind, he sent out a message to his 3,500 suppliers for all of his businesses that he owns. And he said, look at your own supply chain and look at your own processes. And if there is slavery involved, tell us and we'll help you change your operation to not use slaves. And if you want to keep supplying us, you're also permitting us to do a spot check on your supply chain. However, if you claim that you don't have any slavery in your supply chain, and if then we are to discover it, you will be barbecued. And just to explain what he means by barbecued, not only will he cut you completely off from all of his own business networks, but he'll cut you off from his <coughs> networks networks. And just a reminder of at the start of the video who he's connected with, he's part of that Bill Gates uh, Breakthrough Energy venture, and if you look at all the names that are part of this venture, you can see that Andrew Forrest moves in some pretty powerful circles. So anyway, going back to his memo that he sent to his 3,500 suppliers, almost everyone replied, and some even re replied with some self-reporting of some issues they had, including a large Pakistani supplier that he worked with. But 50 did not reply at all. So can you guess who he investigated first? Anyway, a bit of time went by, and across his overall supply chain of his 3,500 suppliers, he found that 12 had slavery in the process. And that is, and finding these 12 is a combination of investigative work and also some of these parties reporting themselves. And he is a man of his word. So in 2014, he made a deal with a large Pakistani organization which saw them get cheaper coal in exchange for freeing their 2.5 million slaves. So how's that for a win-win? And these actions I've been noticed is kind of becoming a figurehead for the anti-slavery movement. So he started the Global Freedom Network and he had the Pope, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar to agree to both condemn and totally eradicate any slavery that's involved in their processes as well. So not only is he attacking slavery through business, but he's also attacking it through religion as well. And to get the endorsement of some of the world's biggest religious leaders, this is a massive milestone for Andrew Forrest. And he has quoted as saying, Upon hearing the news that all parties had agreed to the venture, I have to admit, I became emotional. This is going to change everything. This is set up like a high achieving, measurement driven, totally target oriented company. And it's like a hard edged business. We are out to defeat slavery. We are not out to feel good. This is our mission. You see the complete hopelessness in the eyes of enslaved people. And it's like they're stuck and that they'll never get help and I'm dirt. And then you know that you can't rest until you free them. And as it turns out, it wasn't only the large religions that are very keen to get on board this project as well. Andrew actually found it is actually very easy to recruit both people and organizations to get behind this cause. Because slavery mostly exists not because people are okay with it, but because either one, people don't know about it, or two, people don't know what they can do about it. So when you very clearly present that this is a problem, and two, that this is how you can solve it, most people are very quick to join in on this cause. And so pretty much everyone is on board of Forrest's plan and actions and ending slavery. However, he has received some criticism for some inaction in regards to his biggest customer. So he has basically ended slavery within his supply chain. But what if slavery was discovered in one of your customers? And not only what if it was one of your customers, but what if it was by far your biggest customer? And if you were to dump this customer, you'd lose your dominant position in the market and you'd no longer be in a position to help the vulnerable persons in your supply line. So who is this customer that I'm referring to? Well, according to Human Rights Watch, 13 million Uyghurs and Turkic Muslims are facing human rights abuses and 1.5 million of those are currently in slavery. And the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, or the APSI, found that 82 large companies have benefited from this Uyghur slave labor, including Apple, BMW, and Victoria's Secret. So Andrew Forrest has received some criticism for staying silent on this issue of these Uyghurs being used as slave labor. But I think these criticisms are a little bit harsh and you have to consider that he has currently already saved millions of people from slavery, which is more than what you, me, or basically anyone else in the world has done. And in this particular situation, although Andrew Forrest is pretty much helpless to do anything about it, it's a position where you and I can actually help in our own small little way. So in any business relationship, it's very common knowledge that the customer is the one who holds all the power. 
And so suppliers desperately need customers. I mean, if you threaten to dump a customer, they'll just say, oh man, whatever, I'll just shop somewhere else then. However, if you threaten to dump a supplier, they'll usually try to accommodate what you're asking for. So where do you or I come into this? Well, if you're a regular consumer of a certain brand of product, whether it be your phones or your clothes or whatever, just have a bit of a quick Google to see if there's a slavery scandal in their history. And if there is, and if it's suspected that it's still going on, just switch brands from where you shop. It's a small action that individually has very little effect, but if enough of us do this, and with the work that Andrew Forrest is doing, together we can all end slavery. And with that, I can't think of a better possible note to end this video on, 